So this is the newest project for now, and this is a, uh, a cocktail Space Invaders that I picked up. It's pretty neat. The top's over there, but um, um, yeah, it's kind of got problems all over the place. Um, monitor has issues. Power supply decided to take a shit on me 15 minutes in, and it's got bad RAM on the on the board. So just some interesting things about the cocktail version of this uh, monitor. This is a Wells Gardner V1000, which is a black and white monitor, or 1001. And it's the uh, cocktail version, which has some uh, strange midway modifications, like this relay and this relay, which is actually used, this relay gets a uh, signal from the game board, or the coil voltage from the game board, for uh, se when the second player plays. It'll flip the screen by giving this coil power, which flip some stuff over here, turns this one on, and this one physically fli or flips the uh, yokes wires uh, back and forth to, you know, reverse the drawing of the image on the screen, which is kind of neat. It's a, a simple way of doing things, except when your, uh, your relay is kind of screwed up. I can see that somebody removed the uh, wire for the, the coil to the pins here, and it's disconnect or disconnected there. And these are all bent up, so they're gonna have to do something about that. Um, but otherwise, the monitor is dead. It gets no B plus. Um, we got a po possible fix for that. It's got a bad uh, resistor in there for uh, feeding the rectified power from the uh, the rectifier to the voltage regulator. I'll have to probably check the voltage regulator and the hot. And it uh, looks like the hot has already been replaced at one point since it has like an NTE deal there. So, and also that's not the only weird midway modification this thing has. As you can see, there are five potentiometers here. One's labeled contrast, one's brightness, one's vertical hold, one's horizontal hold, and the other one is uh, nothing. So that's another midway modification, and what that is is it adjusts the, uh, the vertical centering by um, going in here. We have this weird little board right there and what that does is it goes from the transformer goes to those uh, diodes and that that uh, capacitor that capacitor there and that just feeds you know unrectified what 13 volts or whatever into the monitor it goes through the uh, connector through some uh, not labeled pins on the monitor schematics goes to the uh, the potentiometer and you adjust the voltage through that and it goes directly to the vertical output pin for the uh, the vertical sweep so it kind of moves the image left and right for centering which would be kind of weird because it flips the entire thing upside down when you go to the second player so it would probably reverse that I think reverse the uh, centering which is kind of Weird. I guess you would want to center it based on where it will show up when it rotates instead of vertically centering it on the screen itself. So that's kind of kind of weird modification. So besides that, um, also this thing here, whoever mounted the chassis to the, the frame here before is a complete utter retard. As you can see by this picture I'm going to put up on the screen, um, they mounted it to the wrong holes here. <laughs> and the heat sink was making contact with the picture tube which caused this circuit board to bend and uh, crack in a spot and bad solder joints and all that good stuff. That was amusing to say the least. Um, so that's all that, all that's going on with the monitor. I'm still uh, working on it for now. What I want to do today, I guess, is just to get this thing going. Um, the power supply, well, the game works. It's just got some uh, RAM correction. I got it to hook up to uh, the TV here. I got a picture of it running. It's got some RAM issues, as you can see by the the uh, corruption on the screen. So that's something that's going to have to be looked at. And then um, I was like, okay, well, at least it's working this far. I'm going to sit here and play like a one-player game of Space Invaders on my TV when uh, the UFO noise decided it wanted to go all woo instead of you know making the usual noise and then nothing power supply decided to take a shit apparently um there's no shorts on the mother or the boards 
for the power rails to ground so it's not like it's shorted here on one of these capacitors or anything like that like a tantalum so i think there's something wrong with the power supply when you put hook it up like the 12 volts drops down to like six or seven volts instead of 12. It, it's needing some attention and uh i'm lazy so i got it some attention from you know arcade parts and repair or whatever i'm gonna throw this 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 stuff on there i did replace the pots because I, I suspected maybe the pots were bad but that wasn't it so I'll just throw this stuff on there and then uh, see if it will come back to life. So I installed all the rebuild kit and the cap kit to the power supply. I'm still not getting any favorable results. The 5 volt rail keeps on dropping to like 3.8 or something like that. And uh, the game doesn't boot obviously with, it plugged in, or with the game plugged in. But when unplugged it goes to 5 volts like it should. So I'm trying to figure out if this is a power supply issue or a game board issue and um, both time I, times I've tested it I've uh, had the sound board removed so it's either this board's problem or the main board's problem so this is where uh, my uh, not finest work comes in I'm going to plug this thing into a switcher and I don't have a plug or anything so I did the uh, high-tech method of uh, installing wires to the motherboard here. I soldered them on. And, uh, yeah, it's, this is going to be jank. So either I'm going to blow something off the motherboard here, probably a tantalum capacitor that's kind of on the edge to the point where this thing is pissed off. Or it will just, uh, you know, stay solid voltage and should be fine. Maybe I, I might... Uh, try and see if I can get like a composite image off this because it should display something even with the, without the sound, sound board I would suspect or maybe not I don't know so yeah I got pin 1 and 2 going to 5 volts here that goes over to here to 5 volts this is me triple checking because I don't want to plug this thing in wrong 3 and 4 which is uh 12 volts, see, okay, let's see here. You got one and two, which is five. Three and four, which is 12. So we're gonna check the 12 volts for the third time. Or at least I am, I'm not, not you. That, that's going to 12 volts. And we got five, which is negative five volts. We got this going to negative five and ground and that's ground so here goes nothing I already uh, plugged this into the wall to uh, see if the five volts is good and all the vol voltages on this power supply are good so either it's not going to have an issue or something's going to blow up I also did uh, put my meter in between the five volts on the uh, on the, this power supply to the five volts on this one for checking an amperage. It's pulling about 0.7 amps. I'm not sure how much this board specifically is supposed to pull, but it's still pulling the voltage down, so I'm kind of suspecting it's a power supply issue. If not, we might have a kaboom here as this thing can. Uh, Supposedly put out 15 amps on the 5 volts rail, so here we go. Hmm. Let's see here. For a second there, this thing kind of sounded hissing, but maybe it was kind of pissed off or something. Let me uh, get a meter. And so I required some assistance for uh, holding this. Um, let's go. Here to here. Turn it on, see what it looks like. Uh, well, I got five volts. Twelve. 
at 4.8. So I guess the game should be running right now. Let me get a video signal off this, I think. Now we truly have reached peak arcade testing harness here. I've got the video plugged in. I'll turn it on, see if anything happens. Well, something happens. Let's plug this in. One minute. All right, now I got that installed. Let's see if it fires up. No, it's pissed. I must have done something to it. But it is outputting a signal. A mad signal. There's a good chance that I don't have the CPU in properly because I pulled that earlier. So it turns out it is working. Let me uh, power it up. That's working. But what my uh, switcher power supply that has, or doesn't have, but the original does, is a reset circuit which holds down a pin on the board here. Let me, uh, I got my meter in, or in uh, amps mode, so it should be acting like a direct short. So I'll uh, hold this here, and then touch this pin here. Look at that. It's Space Invaders. So, the game is working, minus a certain little uh, problem where it appears that the uh, Space Invaders are going a little bit too far down. So when the, uh, the game tries to clear its uh, frame buffer of the previous Invaders, it leaves the top halves present. So there's still an issue with it. Also, I think um, if we keep on waiting for this, when it comes up at the play at the top, it had the upside down Y. The invader will come in, grab it, flip it right side up, and the Y will be a little bit lower or higher than it was before. So things aren't quite working correctly. Things are not appearing where they want, where they should be. So, at first I suspected it was a RAM problem. And uh, for a moment, a friend on Discord sent, since I don't have the capability of writing ROMs at all for myself, sent a Space Invaders test ROM, which you can download on the internet for testing Space Invaders boards. Fire this up. Now I also have to go over here and uh, hold the reset down so that it runs. So after I let it run here, um, I'm not sure if it does anything after it checks the sounds, which you can't hear because there's no speakers or power for the audio amplifier hooked up. Pull off the uh, reset here. The RAM's okay. I'm not sure if the white bars are supposed to be there. I'll have to uh, see about that. Might have to check the wrong check checksums. Uh, so this definitely confirms to me that I have a power supply issue. And I'll put the original ROM back in there, double check, make sure the game is working. I'll put, set the game aside and I'll look at the power supply some more. All right, so progress has been made. And if I'm putting the right image up right now, you'll see uh, this is the problem. That's the five volt pin closest to the camera on this image and um, for the uh, connector. And obviously I did not inspect it enough and that was the problem the entire time. It's just a bad solder joint. So I put a bunch of flux all over the back of that connector and reflowed everything. So it's nice and shiny now. So with the power supply reinstalled back where it belongs here inside the uh, cabinet and uh, Everything's plugged in. Let's uh, 
Let's fire things up here. Got to get this stupid VCR doing its thing here. Line two, and come over here and pop. Well, I got the test ROM in there right now. And all the sounds work, which is crazy. That's loud. I'd probably turn it down after I get the thing working, but it's not completely in the clear yet. So we go through this a couple times and it'll show you what the next issue is. So this is our issue. What this is is that it's uh, showing the results of the shifter test. And they're all supposed to be zeros, but as you can see, we're not all zeroed out. We got some shifter issues. So now I gotta use this to uh, help determine what the problem is. Um, except I'm not smart enough to do that. Oh, it's all things. So uh, that'll take some time. So I think that's as good as this is gonna get for now. And uh, let's uh, fire up the game itself, I guess. It starts up with some Space Invaders. So, the only problem, really, you see from the game is when the uh, invaders step down, they're moving too far. So I think it's like the shifters for moving up and down. So they sh step down too far and it doesn't erase the uh, top line completely. So it leaves behind a uh, kind of the top heads of those aliens, which is actually interactable. You can touch, you can shoot those and get points, which is kind of silly. And also uh, when it flips the Y for the, uh, pl the play here, <clears throat> with the, uh, ver the vertical shifter dealy bopper, not working out so well when it tries and flips the uh, the text there or whatever it doesn't really put it back in the right spot and then it cuts off the head of that alien too so yeah it's a little bit unhappy but I think I think we'll uh, get that figured out eventually but yeah I can coin it up and just play a game also uh these uh, dip switches right here can flip on whether you want the second player controls tied with the first player controls. I think that's how the upright game handles uh, controls for the second player is that you turn those on so that the first player controls also inputs directly into the, uh, the inputs on the board for the second player. You turn those off with the cocktail since you have two separate controllers. But yeah, I can start up a game. sound makes a pop so the sound comes on and then playing Space Invaders. Not very well. All we got to do now is uh, take a look at this monitor and uh, hopefully we can get this stupid thing going. Um, so I got the resistor for this. I'm going to pull these out and check them and then I'll install the re resistor and then hopefully fire it up. I don't know if this has been modified in an incorrect way that will cause issues because it's definitely not bent in a way that you know the contacts would touch as if the switch was off so I might look at that. Um, that I wonder if that's something that might have killed that resistor maybe someone tried to uh, fix it so it wouldn't uh, flip but whatever I don't know what the hell they were thinking when they did any modification to that and then especially with the uh, chassis placement to where it was rubbing into the tube that's just retarded so I'll uh, throw that in there and see what happens so I did install the uh, resistor but I'm not going to turn it on yet because I did check the hot and I checked the uh, voltage regulator which sits over here and this guy is shorted so I'm going to have to buy a new part for him so the monitor is going to be dead in the water for now but I do Let's get this out of here. 
Oh. Oh, I don't want to lose those screws, absolutely not. So here's the uh, new resistor installed, so I'll uh, I'll be ready to go for when I get a new voltage regulator. So, since I still had nothing else to do, I went to go dig in some more on the uh, the problems on the game board over here, the uh, the shifter error on the uh, RAM or on the uh, test ROM, and um, let's go look at that real quick. I got a picture of it on on my uh, computer. So this is a picture I took of the uh, the results of the uh, shifter test. And it will only show the screen if there is an error with the uh, shifter. So um, what this means is that th these, this is the uh, results of the test. So what it does is that it um, a, uh, dug through the source code for the, uh, for the um, test ROMs a little bit to try and figure out what it's doing here. So we got here this uh, array of data here for the, uh, the test. And you see that the, uh, the test has uh, six bytes here or whatever for each line but it's arranged in byte shift and result so this is the byte that's input into the shifter how much it's going to be shifted and the expected result and um, the result that gets from in inputting these two into the shifter is uh, exclusive ORD with uh, the expected result and then you get the, uh, the result if it's a zero then it got what it expected and if it's not a zero well, then you get that and that. So we got something wrong with uh, with the uh, the shifter in some way here. So uh, what I did was I just uh, wrote down the ex expected uh, result and the uh, actual uh, result here onto a notepad in binary, so we can try and figure out what's going on here. So as you can see, this is since this is a uh, uh, exclusive ORD, there will be uh, one where it differs from uh, what it's supposed to be. So on the first result here, which is, uh, if I look at the image, 05, that's the first one I did. So what it's trying to do is input a, uh, a byte of one into the shifter and shift it by zero, or zero so it's not going to move it at all. So you should get the same uh, result as you get put in. But instead, what we have here is that we have our result has nothing where it's uh, expecting a byte, but it has something over here, two bytes over. So I was like, what the heck, what's going on here? And why is it only doing it like every two bytes? Like it does it here for the first two bytes, then not these two bytes, then does it for these bytes, and not these bytes. And uh, what I've, uh, I've thought about it for a little bit, and it makes sense that, well also, uh, let me, uh, show you this too here. This is a page which uh, um, documents the hardware of Space Invaders here and has IO ports and stuff and um, documentation about the shift hardware. So what it does is it's a 16-bit shift register with uh, like two bytes here that it has inside of its uh, internal memory, I guess you could call it. Here we have the first one, the first byte that's y X and the second byte that's Y. So writing to port 4 which is one of the I.O. ports on the game. Writing to port 4 um, inputs shift data. So what it will do is it uh, writes shifts into X and then moves what was previously in X to Y. So the new value is in X and then the old value is in Y. So if you write a, or hex AA to it, it goes it uh, inputs it into there. Then you write FF to it, it moves AA over, and then writes FF to it, and then so on and so forth. And port two, port two is uh, the shift amount, and it's a three bits uh, uh, input there for the shift uh, hardware. So you put bits in there to tell it how much to shift. So the result will be uh, whatever's in this, or eight bits of this, plus how much you want to shift it or whatever. So um, if you write, you know, zero uh, offset of zero into the uh, the shift amount. And the result will just be the X's here. But if you put two, it'll shift the result window over a little bit to this. So what I think the problem is, is that one of the bits on the uh, port two here is stuck. So what's what's going on here is that on the uh, 
Whoop, let's get this out of here. On the first line, what it does is it puts in hex 01, which is just a a, uh, a bite at the very end of your your uh, or a bit at the very end of your bite here, and it moves it over by zero. So um, it should come up with the same result as it was uh, in, or inputted. But for some reason, my game is shifting it over by two. So then you go to the next one, which is supposed to shift over by one, and what it does is it actually uh, shift it by two again. So I think the uh, you know bit one on or bit one on the uh, the shift amount is stuck on, so it's always going to shift it over by two when it's not trying to. But when it does start trying to shift it by two, since that bit's already stuck on anyway, the result is correct. So it tries shifting it by two, it gets it correct, shifts it by three, and it gets it correct. And then it shifts it by four, which would be like, uh, you know, it would be supposed to be that being inputted to the uh, into the shift hardware, but it's actually getting this. So then it errors out again by shifting it over two more than it should be. So I'm like, okay, so I gotta figure out where the hell on this that data is going. So this right here is the shift hardware right here. And uh, there's the inputs for the controls. There's the data bus, um, blah, blah, blah. And uh, sound hardware over here. So. I was looking at it, I'm like, well, where do I begin? But the schematics are nice. See, it says port 4 here. And port 4 is where it inputs the uh, the value in, or the uh, the data into the shift register, not, not how much it shifts. And if you keep on looking up here, there's port 2, and that's the shift amount. And there's the three lines right here for the shift amount. So EA1 right there is held up. So this chip right here is bad. So, since I don't have that right now and I can't fix it, I'm going to play around. I'm going to swap these two chips around because they're the same chips. So, what this should give me instead is instead of shifting the bytes too much, if I were to fire the game up with this one bad the same way, we should see lines in the graphics uh, randomly. So, I'm going to swap those two chips out and uh, we'll see what the results are just for shits and giggles. Alright, so you'll never believe this. So. I got those two chips right here. They're socketed and swapped. So um, now what should happen is uh, there should be lines in the graphics since that has to do with the inputs and outputs of the shifter and not the shift amount. But as you will see momentarily, we got the top back on too since uh, I got the cabinet glued um, or I could like you know do nothing oh okay that's bad let me not do that so I got my cable in there correctly um, we'll see now there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. They shift down correctly now. So that's crazy. So I'm like, well, what the heck? So if that chip is bad and the output's always on, then it should be putting lines through the graphics. However, um, I was looking at the, uh, the chip right here that it goes to, all these chips like that. This this goes to all these chips here. Um, let's see here, let me uh, open up the right tab. Let's start looking at it. So that chip goes to pins 9, 10, and 11, which are S0 to S2, which is uh, select inputs. What's that? What's that line? I don't know. It's enabled when low. So the entire time, it was a solder joint on the board that was causing that. And I'm sitting here digging into all this crap and uh, doing some big brain math. And all I had to do is reflow the stupid thing. But hey, now it's working 100%. So the, spa uh, the Space Invaders game board is working fine. I can coin it up and hit the one player button. 
play some Space Invaders. Yeah, I kind of have to do it. Do the whole sideways thing. Yeah, all the sounds do work, so that's cool. So yeah, that means all that's left on Space Invaders is I'm gonna order a uh, a Braze multi-game kit for it, so I can play multiple games on my Space Invaders hardware, because there are a lot of games that run on Space Invaders hardware. And all that remains is this punk. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a two-parter. I think this is gonna be the end of part one. So the game is fully functional now and happy and ready to go. All it needs is a monitor to stick inside of it. There should be a fan in here. I don't know what the hell that's going on with this. I'm about to take this off. I think there's a fan that's supposed to go right here and it plugs into this, it's a 120 volt fan. Um, yeah, I'll have to figure something out later. But yeah, I think that's enough for part one of Space Invaders Cocktail.